we now come to the main business. A motion on backbench business. Debate on a motion relating to Shrewsbury 24 and release of papers. Dennis Skinner. All right, yes. Dennis Skinner, and then I'll... <laughs> well, that's put the Lib in the place, hasn't it? <laughs> I mean, I've always wanted to do it. I know that Clegg's, Clegg's got a sour face, and I... It, I mean, anyway, we live in the age of transparency, don't we? We have transparency now coming out of every pore. Every day that I turn up in the House of Commons, from all sides I'm assailed by people that say we need transparency. Yeah. And at the beginning I was unsure what it meant. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm sure now. It's a class case, isn't it? Cons transparency. It only applies to the things that affect us, but it doesn't give us an inch when we're asking for something from the other side. Yeah. We, can have, we can have transparency about hospitals and care homes and everything else, schools, but not this. And isn't it strange that we're being asked today that we can't have it again? by this Tim Pot coalition. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. I know the last Labour government didn't pull the weight either. Yeah, yeah, well it has to be put on the record. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But this is a debate about class and we don't get many in here. Every so often it erupts and we talk about class. That's what this is. It was the same with Hillsborough when my honourable friend did it. It was the same about Thatcher and the funeral and all the rest. I don't want to go into that. But the truth is it's very rare. Here are a few people that were on the picket line, ordered a bus from a bus company, and they talk about conspiracy. All the records are there. I know it wasn't the age of the social media and Twitter and God knows what else. If it had been, they'd have won. <laughs> if they'd all had a mobile phone <laughs> with a camera so they could have took some pictures <laughs> yes it's about class and that's why we're here today thanks to our honourable friend and his colleagues who have asked for this to take place one of the reasons was that the 1970s I was here and I couldn't believe it the moment I got to London we were on picket lines and winning, winning. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often. <laughs> you have to treasure every moment. My father worked for 50 years in the pit. And he said that when we the won the 1972 strike, he said, it's the first time in my life. And all this talk somehow or other about workers having power. Yeah, it's not true. And this is another example where they don't have it, or otherwise the papers would have been released. And what's more, this whole episode would not have begun. It began because of the climate of 1970 and onwards. Because the establishment then, the Heath government, were defeated by the miners in 1972 after a seven week strike. A bit of pushing and shoving, that's true, at the end of the day, at Saltley, but by and large it was a relatively peaceful affair, affair. The police were wearing long stockings underneath the trousers and told Tommy Swain, he said, I'm going to pay. <laughs> that's what it was like, by and large. And what happened then, there was the upper class shipbuilders, they won, they had a sit-in. And then there was the Vic Turner and Bernie Steer saying we're going to put some pickets on down at Covent, what is now Covent Garden at the docks. And they got put in Pentonville Jail and the Industrial Relations Act had been passed and got the Royal Assent here in Parliament. But what happened? After Vic Turner was put in jail with his mates, the official solicitor had to turn up representing the whole echelons of the establishment 
and saying they won't purge their own contempt, we've got to do it for them. <laughs> and we said yes at a price. And so they had to put the industrial relations bill in the long grass. In the middle of all this, there were some people like those that I shouldn't speak about in the gallery, but they decided to also battle for better wages. They never had great wages. They'd had a lot of injuries, had you, Cat, and the building workers. And so they decided in that climate to take a chance and fight for some better wages and conditions. That's all it was. The evidence was there. By all the accounts that we've heard. But the establishment decided that somebody needed a lesson. We'll take these on. We lost to the miners. We lost to Upper Clyde. We lost the Industrial Relations Act. We've got to have a victory. That's what this was all about. And don't let anybody kid yourself that when the echelons of the state decide to take action, the judiciary join them. And I don't care what their names are. It's been there apparent for so many years, and it's still apparent today. My time's running out. I want to pay a compliment to all those that have taken part, but I want to pay the final compliment to that face I saw in Lincoln Prison, Des Warren, fighting the establishment, refusing to acknowledge the prison conditions. And so when I call order. for transparency, it's the face of Mr. Des Warren. Order. Mr. Sir Bob Russell, my apologies, as the House will know, we alternate between sides. Um, follow that in six minutes. <laughs>